John Gus, Sam Bottoms Up Beer. I'm here in Broad Ripple, Indiana at One Up Bar. These guys are putting in an arcade bar. We're super excited to have our first actual bar in Broad Ripple. We're just up the road, so glad that we can come have a drink somewhere local. Um, run you through what we're doing here. This is the front. We've got a giant bar. Uh, we're going to try and keep it as simple as possible for their bartenders, so we're going to go to this end. We've got a couple of hole saws to put through as we've got two countertops. It's an eight-product system using two four-product dispensers. Guys have opted for a wall mount tap display, which will sit approximately here up on the wall for everyone to see. Um, next thing we've got to do is, you probably can't see underneath here, but the supports run on the bottom side of this bar. We're going to have our trunk line and our EKDs. So all our wiring, all our beer and all our glycol will be nice and tucked up underneath the bar. And then at about this point here on the back side is a cool room. So we've just got to punch through, make ourselves a nice big hole to get in through there. We'll run our lines up, we'll head up onto the roof and all that back end we'll run through with you next shot. Uh, so this is under the bar guys. Um, that's an 18 inch quarter pilot that was thrown through the wall. We get to the other side here and uh, we know we're in the right spot. So. side of our hole we put through here we've stepped it hopefully you can guys can see that in the camera uh, on an angle that runs like this therefore we can kind of sweep it as close to the wall as possible and then also sweep it up as close to the wall so we don't bounce it out too far keeps everything nice and neat all right so got our trunk line here just before we snake it through the wall uh, we've decided because this is why we've got to do it with all our long runs so might as well do it for this one too is that uh, we've got two different types of EKDY here. The real only difference between these ones is so we can tell the colours apart. We've got four sets of telephone wire in each of these. So when we've got an eight product or a four product, it works really, really nicely to have two different wires. Um, apart from the fact that we can tell the colour apart to, to, to attach to each dispenser, you can also see that um, we can run the exact amount of pairs, both at the front and back end, with one wire each. So if you think of it, this is the best way for us is we just go with four products, one wire, and then therefore we've got two wires for eight products. We give it a wrap around to make sure we get through the trunk line all right. This guy only has to make it through a wall which is about a foot wide. So really that's enough to get us through. That way we can keep everything together. When we go to snake it through, it'll just pull out all nice and neat and uh, we shouldn't get all tangled up. Um, as we've worked out with this one, we've got quite a short run. Uh, these guys have got beer pumps and EKDs. Find it best, um, and we've learned from the best, that you want to keep around a minimum of a pint's worth of beer in the lines. We have a total length of about 50 feet of 3.8 trunk line. So we've got that plus the EKDs. It's relatively that amount of beer. We've got a little bit of restriction on the uh, dispensers as well, so it has a tiny bit of beer in it too. So what we're going to do is we've got nearly 40 feet excess into the cool room, but instead of just running it up and straight into our panels that will be sitting over here, these guys here, is we're going to take the sheath off, we're going to run up the wall and we're going to loop around the top of the cool room. We've just measured it out that we should have nearly the exact amount to get to the furthest point. So. Um, that's going to work out really nicely and therefore we can keep the right amount of beer in the line that we want and the system should work perfectly.
All right, so we finished running all our beer lines all the way up, all the way along in a giant loop around the quarter. We're gonna come back down here. We've probably got a couple that might need a little bit of 3 8 added on, but that's fine. We're gonna be putting our four panels evenly spaced right here. They're gonna sit up there like that. That's the next thing that we're up to, and that's what we're gonna go for then. Uh, what we've done in the past, uh, with Warren would say, we do a lot, is we try and get this on here first before we get it up. Uh, these panels won't fit out the door. It was just too much of a pain to move over. They give us a good guide of where we're supposed to go and height and everything like that. Uh, the height of a keg is about so high. We can get our drains and everything underneath the top rack, even though this is actually gonna sit further out, which uh, will stop them from crashing into them. So. We've got a few more inches that we can pull this rack out. So yeah, that's why we put it up that way. This time around, it is slightly quicker if you can get these ones on straight away. Um, but to get these on, if they're a little bit fiddly, obviously you cut them to size, you can quickly just take out the right side EKD. It gives you plenty of room to manipulate, so it's not too bad. You'll notice another thing with these is this one's been pushed back in because we did that earlier. But every right side EKD is unattached. We found that even with our new packaging, um, the slimline box, if you get any contact from the side, these things are very weak, the reed twitches. So if you uh, pull it out there, it's just in behind. If that gets hit while it's in that, it can crack or snap off and it's not fun to get out and replace. So that's why these ones don't have one in there. So now we just run through with them on the wall and put them in like that one's got there. And from that point, it is working out where our CO2 is running, which means that we'll be putting a, a nut on this side and getting rid of that barb, connect the CO2 in feed all the way through. This will end up going a line. We'll put a shut off valve on that, just so it's nice to have inside a cool room, just in case. So shut off valve, that'll run out to where our glycol lines will also meet and go out to the chiller and then the CO2 will run through to the bulk tank out there. Then we just go uh, go through and do the exhaust, plumbing all that. These just connect straight in there like that and snap shut. So we'll go through and do all that stuff. Put our EKD drain off or bleed off there. We've actually got a drain under that tub so we can run straight to that, which is super nice. Throw our EKD wiring up make it all neat along the drain line and then shoot them to the signal boxes and that's almost everything we need to do as far as setup goes in the cool room, so. All right, so we've spoken to Michael, we've worked out exactly where they want their dispensers. Uh, he likes to have a lift that we could put a beer down on, so we're talking this exact kind of setup here. We've just got to miss that support underneath and he likes the idea of sitting it off the edge of the counter a little bit too, so everyone's winning. If you have a look under here, we've got our trunk line and our EKDs. We've pulled through extra EKD wire, if you look back there, which uh, is going to be the length that we need to get under. Eric is about to do some hole saw holes underneath here, around the four and a quarter inch size for us to run these lines both down. So underneath here, once we get our holes, we can work out exactly where these come together and go through. We'll do a little bit of re-foiling, re-insulation, get this nice and tight up there in that kind of situation. So it's all nice and neat. We'll attach the drain to it. We'll run all that through there. We'll drop the electrical wiring, our power outlet, down the same hole as well. And then those EKD wires that we just looked at, they'll shoot up there. We'll run them across here, and then as neatly as possible across here. And in these little connectors is where we'll be landing them and they'll attach to our signal box in the back. Yeah. 
getting ready to set the dispensers on the counter. Got the plumbing lines for the beer and the cooling and the power cord. Get ready to hook a drain to the dispenser. And then we'll set it down in the hole and start plumbing everything together. All right, so while you were gone, we've come back <laughs> and I've run the EKD drain tubing, which is this one all across the top here. We actually, as we said before, there is a drain hiding under that tub, I believe. Yep, so we're gonna be able to run straight and directly down the wall with this, which will be really nice. Uh, we've also gone through and done all the CO2, so that's all connected. That's where the shutoff will hit on the end of there and then we'll shoot that up through the roof when we run the glycol lines out and towards the power pack. The other thing we've done is the line for the exhaust. So this is the pump exhaust and then that guy will also run up and he'll go through the hole when we punch through. I've gone through and connected all of our beer pumps onto here so that's why that looks a little bit different. Thrown up the signal boxes that we'll be joining the all these EKD wires into along with the cat fire cable that has been run through to the dispensers. So next steps are probably I'll be getting that cable, run that up to here into both of these boxes. I'll run these wires, so it'll be two panels into that box, these two panels into that box, and then I'll probably start landing some of the beer lines. So beer lines are gonna be going you know, onto here, onto our elbows. Uh, we use, these are actually all labelled, numbered. I don't know if you can zoom in on that, but black is number one. Um, it goes black, brown, uh, all the way through to light blue, dark blue, light green, which is this, believe it or not, dark green, uh, orange, pink, and there's about 12 different colours, but, you know, the more you do it, the more you learn them. Otherwise, they are all labelled for us. So, I'll start doing all that, and that's the next step. this up to him. He'll squeeze a little bit down if you can get back in there. That'll come down inside. We'll run it along the inside of the wall at the back. If you want to shoot that. Mm -hmm. um, those two red and blue lines will come down pretty much as far as we can where we'll just splice directly into that. Then we'll make it neat up against the wall shooting through that hole. So this is the exhaust. So that exhaust will be run out and up through there. And this is the CO2 feed. The shutter valve goes here, and then we run that out and up through there, and that's uh, pretty much fill the hole after that, that's where we're at.
So we've got the Enfeed for our CO2 that we talked about. This is a shut off that's finally on there. Uh, it shoots up there past that through our hole with our glycol line, which is this guy. The CO2 exhaust that's coming from the beer pumps is also shooting out through that hole. And then if we walk around, Eric and Nathan were doing this earlier, but this is a pretty typical thing that we have to do for CO2. The tanks aren't typically right next to the cool room. Sometimes we're lucky and they are, but a lot of the time they're not. So we're sticking our head through false ceilings and doing this kind of thing, running our line up over there. That's actually the wall of the cool room right there. And then we're cruising up through here over the divides. And then in that corner up there, you can see where the soda guys have popped down. We've uh, just shot down behind them. Cruise that down to here. They've got one big 50 pounder here. They're gonna grab another one for us. If you have a bulk tank, they normally have multiple outlets on it so we can either tee in or we've just got our own attachment. We just go straight onto it. Seeing as we're gonna have our own tank, we've got a high pressure regulator. This guy down here goes up to about 100 PSI. This kind of run, those beer pumps we were talking about are only gonna sit around 40, 45, because it's not a giant run. So we might have this guy set around the 70 mark. Uh, should be plenty, just if they pour multiple beers at once. But uh, yeah, well, he goes straight on there with a washer, and that's our own supply, and uh, we can look after ourselves and start our charging and testing. All right, so we're at the point, we're under the dispensers now, where we're going to be splicing at the front end. And uh, I'll try and go through everything that we need to remember with this, but uh, first of all, uh, most importantly, is this is our restriction, it's 3 sixteenths on the dispenser. We always have six feet of restriction on this. We never want this cut. That's our, uh, that's our thin tubing that slows down the speed. It's especially important when you're using beer pumps and such. So this is what stops us from having foamy beer yet allowing us to pour fast through the bottom. So we don't want that cut at all. On the ends of it, we've just got quarter inch into three eight splices. Wherever we do the install, we always use three eight trunk line. So. Um, it's always good to put it on this side, just another reminder not to cut this stuff short. So that, we've got two glycol lines for each dispenser. So that's these two and these two. With this, eventually everyone learns the color situation. Um, these trunk lines all have a color and a number coordination. I just know, um, you know, by practice that black is number one, brown's two and we run, we run all the way through on this one for an eight product trunk line. The pink is eight, and uh, we got just the two sets of black lines, which are the solid red and blue in there. So what that means at the front end is that we've got two black lines on each dispenser. We want a U using one of these guys, Whoop. one of these guys, together one dispenser to the other so that we have a perfect loop through the system. So. When you go to bundle them all together, along with the fact that because these dispensers are labelled individually, they're only going to have numbers one to four, or up to six if you've got a BU6 on each side. So before you put them all together and get it all nice to punch together and realise that you've just doubled everything up and you're not sure which one goes to which dispenser, it's always good to have another kit of either numbers or just a permanent marker to work to write the extra ones on there. So in this case, one to four, I would leave these guys alone. I would write one, one on both of these lines. This side, where it's written one to four, I'd go, instead of one, I'd write five working through to eight so that we don't double up. And then we've got them identified. And then these guys, I'd probably just write two and two so then I know it's the second dispenser. So then we bring all these guys together, making it as neat as possible. You want every beer line touching a glycol line. That's how it keeps it cold. So once you've got them all there together like that, make it nice and neat, curled around, tight. You can start kind of temporary affixes, maybe tape or even zip ties if you wanted to. And you want them in a similar spot, ideally, that it looks neat under here that's easy to take and you don't have a giant amount of gap between your first and last splice that you need to make. That way, when you cut open the trunk line, and as much as this is a very nice one, sometimes we're shooting out a hole and we don't have a whole lot of room to move. So you wanna get 
your first and last splice together as close as possible so that you can only need to use from say this one here through to about that height there you can connect it all up you also want to remember that once you've got it done you want it to be nice and neat so whichever situation it is these guys are going to put a shallow shelf in front of here for glasses so it's not a giant deal but we still want to make it look pretty good so we'll end up strapping it against the wall pushing it back like that obviously still having access to the power behind but that's uh that's this step and uh eric's going to tackle it now so uh we've just got this all spliced in we talked about how we ran it through the roof before we're going to go check to make sure firstly that it's cycling all through our lines through both dispensers so that we haven't looped anything over and then secondly that we don't have any leaks anywhere for the glycol system so this type of uh, unit will not run just the pump itself. Some of them will run just the pump itself, which is really nice because we don't get it cooling down on us, which causes condensation, which can potentially make us think we have a leak when we don't, um, especially when we're testing with water on the beer lines. But uh, this guy, he'll run the pump and the chiller only when the power's on. So on he goes. Everything's circulating. Uh, if you run out the front, there should be a slightly tinged look through the lines, and uh, they're all exposed for that reason that we can check and make sure everything's working properly. So we're checking the glycol system. Uh, Sam was back there, he just fired up the unit. Um, I'm up here watching uh, the product uh, come in, go to the first dispenser, come back through a U that we have in the line, go up to the second dispenser, and then go back and head back to the unit in the back to make sure it's circulating and not leaking. All right, so glycol's running through the lines. While we're doing that, we've just pulled tight our EKD lines, which are these. Uh, we identified that we're gonna go with the brown for the first four and the gray for the second four. So I now know when I go into the cool room, this is gonna be my longer guy. He's gonna run through to the far left side inside the cool room, which corresponds with this being the far left side when we're at the front. And um, once we're at this point, we've just shot it through with the trunk line. We've got it all open under there, so we're not strapped to it yet, but we've got it a relatively the same length, and it shoots just behind. It'll go up, it just gets tidied up. It's a bit of a loop at the moment, but it'll run up through here, through the back of there, like it does now. We'll get it to here. We'll get it to the right length that it'll cruise across. We'll pull back the sheath on it, and we can start landing them into these ports. Here. So this is the Cat5 telephone wire that we've been talking about with the four sets of pairs in it. I've just got, uh, scoured it with that. When you open it up, you've got this little guy here, which means you can unsheath it without having to cut all the way down. So we want it to come just about to here. We've given ourselves, you know, a little bit extra. Extra is always good. The only thing that can go wrong when you're pulling this is make sure that you're not crossing it over some wires because you you'll pull the sheath off the inside protective barrier. You can kind of see there. So once you know you're good, you can go all the way down as far as you need to go. And then once it's open, it just bends straight off like that. You can pull it straight off. Gives you all this room to move. And when we open it up, you can see the four sets here. We always go with the same color coordination uh, as a company, which just makes it easier for us. And that is going for brown number one, orange number two, blue number three, and green number four. And inside, I'll come to this end. I'm not sure how clear it comes over, but this is when I was talking about the color to color and shade to shade or whatever. But on this side, we're going in, at the back end, it'd be the brown would go to the red wire on the reed switch and the white one would go to the black wire on the reed switch when we use the telephone splices. Uh, we just ran through the front end stuff and how to splice it in, our color coordination and such. Uh, at the back end, this is what I was talking about when I was saying black to white. So you've got our pairs, we've got our first set, our brown ones here, split apart. When I say color to color, um, this read switch is this guy here, so the number one. Um, I just, just write a text marker on there just to remind me when I cut them all short. But color to color, which is those two together, 
These are the guys that we use. Little tiny telephone splicer. It's got three inputs, but we only need the two. So just throw them in. And then once you're in, if you look on the back side, you can make sure they're past that crimp area, which is the middle silver part there. You can see the both colors all the way, almost to the end of the red. So they're in all the way. I just kind of put my hand on the top of it like that to get them close. And then any sort of crimper works, as long as you can get them tight at the end. And then you just gotta put some pressure on top. Nice big crack noise, normally a good sign. Then you just gotta check that it's completely flat. You haven't got any raised ridges or anything like that. That means it's crimped down the whole way. So that's one now, that's what it looked like before. I don't know if that's gonna work for you, but you can see it kind of pushes down a little bit and that's gone all flat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just run through, do that. Then we'll do the black and white, the other side of that pair, and then run through all the other wires and we should be right to test for EKDs. So we've let the system pressurize itself up. Uh, this is what we have it set to. 70 is probably a pretty good number for us right now. Um, our beer pumps are probably going to be set around the 40 mark. Uh, so that's going to be plenty of pressure running through to the system. Um, as we're talking about it, it's got plenty of gas in it over on this valve. Now we'll head out the back and get all that part set up and show you all the valves out there. Uh, we actually have gas now flowing through here. So shut off in the on position so the gas is coming through. I've got all these guys off at the moment. Um, what I'm going to do now is just preset all the gauges. So uh, you can see we've got our stickers here for the bleed off system and our recommended pressures. This one runs down to the colored lines. The colored lines here feed the actual keg itself when we tap into it. So that's the CO2 that carbonates and pressures the keg. So this guy, we you know sit him in between this area. So. You can hand spin to a certain point, we might be able to get there, get that nut out of the way. It starts coming up. So, I mean, that's probably fine for right now. We'll be coming back to dial this in when they get beer, but um, that's pretty much what we set our CO2 between, obviously. Um, when you've got big pumps, that takes a lot of the issue with how fast it's going to pour off is we can use the beer pumps to crank it up. Uh, being a short run, I'm just gonna start these guys off around the 35-ish mark, so just over 35, and I'll just dial them back in like that. If I was to turn this on now, these pumps would start clinking away, because there's nothing going on, so um, I'll leave it off for right now. I'm gonna go through and do the same thing I just did with this panel to these three, and then we're pretty much ready to test with water, so. So, um, the reason they're all flashing is because obviously at the back we have no beer in the system. All the uh, sensors and floats are in the bottom or on position. So they are all flashing empty keg. And I'll run out the back in a sec and drop the first keg tap in water and hopefully it'll show not empty keg. We're about to throw our first keg tap into water to test the system out. We haven't got beer obviously and the cool room's not on. So uh, with beer pumps, this is a pretty cool nifty way that we can do this is you don't even need the keg tap down it can be off all you've got to do is submerge it you don't turn on the co2 line you just turn on this line but before i'm going to turn on this one i'm actually going to pop out the second uh, pump because he's just going to be screaming for air as soon as i do it so here we go it up, start sucking the water up, filling this. This is where we do our bleed off, just like the instructions. Bang, up to the top. That noise you can hear in the background is the bleed off running through and down to that drain. We've got a few little more bubbles in here. So we'll give them a little bit more of a toot, just cause. Sometimes these floats don't go up uh, straight away. You can give them a little bit of a tap they're pretty sturdy, you don't have to be too worried about them that um, when they haven't been used yet sometimes they can just get stuck down the bottom so if that is what's happening with you just give it a little bit of a tap but now we'll go out the front and see if those EKD lights have come off alright so we just went out the back and bled off our first keg tap uh, we just threw it in a bucket of water and uh, bled it off so that the float rose so now you can see that 
The one guard that we've got a full EKD without the back is sitting with the empty keg not flashing, whereas all the other ones are still flashing. These guys are all empty, they've got nothing in there, they've never had beer or water in the system, but uh, this guy for the first time has, so it's a good sign that's come off. And now we're gonna run through uh, priming it and getting all that thing sorted, so. So we're popping into prime, there's a little bit of beer that's uh, in the EKD, but the rest of the lines are completely dry. Uh, we're just testing this one with water, so uh, we've got our glycol system, we haven't bothered running because we're not going to chill any beer, foaming's not going to be an issue for this, but it is a good way to check that we don't have any leaks and that we haven't crossed over any lines or any sensors for the EKDs. So we've got it in prime, we can push him down, always good to cover up the top when it's all air coming through at the start. And expect it kind of to flow like that and nothing happens for a little while and then eventually it'll start flowing so in this case we're not worrying about it getting clear because it's only water so we can stop it as soon as we see water you can also check the drain system works properly which it sounds like it is so it's cruising down there we've got a nice consistent gravitational pull down to the uh, drain um, but yeah so we've got him primed out now that we've got him primed out we can put him into manual mode and program a size Put him down, we'll go with small, we'll, for intents and purposes, we'll just go all the way to a full pint, stop it there. Now at this point, if I have someone out the back, I can tell them or yell at them to pull the keg tap out and we can check that the EKD system works, but firstly, and we'll just do it the long ways, we can go straight into an auto start, I'll get rid of this. and we can check that the function is working properly. So as you can see, it starts filling up and it should get all the way top and stop exactly where I programmed it, which is what it's doing. So we know the system's working properly. All right, so we've just tested our first line. So I've already had this guy, we've bled off completely full. We've gone out the front and we've poured on prime to get some clear water or beer through the line and then we've done our first program of a pint. We've poured a pint on auto to make sure it held the size. And then we've come out the back because we want to test that the EKDs is going to trip when we go to pour and there is nothing in the kit. So what we do there is we grab our line that we've already primed out and already done everything with. We throw him out. We'll grab line number two and we can submerge him because we can do this all at the same time. So this guy, as you can see here, he is off, he is not attached at all. So we've got this guy with pressure, this guy we've pulled out completely. I'm gonna push him back in. The reason I took it out uh, was from for the reason that this pump would just continuously click away if there was no pressure on the system, if it wasn't submerged in the water or attached to a keg. So I throw him back in, he'll probably hiss at us a little bit. Click it back on, starts filling up. As it starts slowing down, you can hit your bleed off, make sure you get the full all the way up. You can hear it shooting through to the drain in the background. The float's gone up itself again. If it doesn't, you can give it a tap to make sure it's gone up. We've got nice, full, clear, no, no giant air bubbles at the top, no halfway full with beer business going on. So this part, he's ready to prime out at the front and we're also ready to test the EKD for number one. All right, so as you can see now, we've got two full EKDs at the back, except we've taken number one out of the water. This guy is yet to be primed out, but his tube of EKD is actually full with water. So what we can do first is, this guy's still in auto mode. We're putting him down. We're gonna see if we trip the EKD or not. There it goes. So we've got nearly a full pint of beer, which is about what we want in the lines anyway, but we got to this point, the EKD has dropped down and we're at the point where it's tripped it, which is exactly what we wanted to see. So everything on that one is functioning correctly. And then we just go on to our normal process for the second one, which will be exactly what we did before, the prime mount part. And then when it starts flowing, we'll program a size and then we'll put in auto, make sure it pours a pint, go out the back and we'll throw the next keg tap into the water and we'll take that guy out. Alright, 
so we've just gone through, we've tested all the EKDs, we've run through them individually just so we can check that they're always wired to the right one and that their hoses and connections are going to the right one. Um, after running through them all, we've blown them out, which is where we're at now, and um, we just get all the air out of the line because they've got no beer right now to put on, so uh, no point leaving some manky beer in the line or anything like that. So we clear all that stuff out. The last bits that we've got left to do is uh, clean up our holes. So we'll put some FOMO fill in the holes here, here and the one at the front. Um, our last bits of connections that need to be covered up, we'll go and seal those and make sure we've got no leaks. So now that we have checked we've got no leaks, we can just go and make them all look nice and pretty. Okay, we uh, ran water through and just checking for leaks, making sure all the displays work. Um, so now we're uh, draining the water out of the system by pressure, air, using air pressure to push it out. My fault. Water will come until it'll get a little spit right at the end when it blows all the water out. After we've done all our testing is uh, throw up our tap display which is gonna sit up here they want it nice and high for everyone to see so we're just finding our center on our dispensers down here and then we'll shoot it up on the wall and have that hung so we're pretty much done here we've finished with all our testing we've got our tap display up thing looks great sitting on their beautiful counter so we'll be back in probably a week or two when the guys get their beer in and we'll come do full setup and training with them and um, that's pretty much a run through of a full bottoms up install. So when we get that part done, put it all together. That's us in a nutshell. Cheers. So we connected the CO2, pressurized the line. Uh, on the other side of the keg over here is a shut off valve. We turn that on, so now there is pressure flowing through all our valves. This is our manifold that we have. The one on the right that says pump feeds down to the beer pumps under here. And then the one on the left is our supply to the kegs. So we don't need as much pressure on it, just what goes through to the keg. And um, as you can see here, we're kind of sitting in the, this one's probably about right, where it's sitting at the moment, maybe just over 35. It's not a very long draw system, or it's only about 50 feet total. So we're gonna try it at that length. This guy, we might turn him up a couple of PSI, just cause he's kind of sitting at 11. So with this you can use a flathead screwdriver, you can use the back of a knife, you can use a butter knife, you can really use whatever you want. We'll start him around there, that's 13, that seems about right. We'll uh, start turning gas on for the rest of them all like that and go from there. So we've got our gas through lines, we've had a look at all of our gauges. Uh, we're going to tap our first set of kegs. We've outside, just in the corner here, we've got our glycol machine. It's down to about 45, which is a little high, but we're good to start tapping our first set. These kegs have only just come in, so they might be a little bit warm anyway. So, first off is, uh, with these is over in the panels that you saw before, you can't really get in there anymore. We're gonna turn on all our shutoffs. You get a clicking noise started. The mess of gas is running through. Pop the top off our keg. There's gas coming out there, so that's good news. down till you twist it to get it round. If you look up here you can see that EKD's just started filling. We need to bleed off that top. Turn them up. We want to get all the bubbles out of that line. So we'll let it settle just for a little bit there. Floats come up, that's good news. A little toot just extra just to get those top bubbles that might be in there out. So now our EKD has been primed. We can now go out the front and prime the lines out. Another good thing to do, as it's the first time these have ever been used, is that sometimes these duck bills that send the CO2 through to the keg tap, they can jam shut or need to be forced a few times at the start. So we get it all set up, connected, and everyone says there's nothing happening. So it's always good just to burp the line. So just pulling it out and just doing that, just to make sure you've got CO2 flowing through to the keg itself. So 
just a little bit there. So we've just tapped our kegs out of the back, we've bled off the EKD, which is the tube with the blue shut off. We made sure that it's full with beer, there's no more air bubbles in there. We've come out the front to bleed the lines to prime them all out. So this is priming them for the first time or after cleaning. So we're just turning them all on. So we've got four dispensers on. Number three is showing empty keg, it's flashing away as we can see here. This is the one that they're getting in tomorrow. So it's doing what it's supposed to do because there is no beer in that line. So that guy, we're not going to touch right now. He can either sit there like that or you can just turn him off. Just a quick reminder though, if you're in prime mode like you should be to get all these started, you won't be able to turn off the dispenser in prime. So you just got to hit manual or auto and then on, off. So we've shut off number three. We're not using him. He's got no beer. That's coming in tomorrow. We're going to prime out number one first. This is the first time beer's ever been through these lines. At the start, we're going to make sure these are tightened down nice and firm. Pressing prime mode, which just means that you can push it down, it doesn't start pouring automatically. It also means when you hit start stop, it'll continuously pour until you hit it again. So, at the start, we're going to hear some popping, a little bit of bubbles, and then some spurting foam. From there, we should get a little bit of foam start rolling through, and then hopefully start clearing up. These cakes have just come in, so they may stay foamy. Uh, we'll give it a go and see what happens. There's a bit of water left from cleaning. Now beer and foam's coming through. It's the first line, so I'm just going to stop it in a few seconds if we don't get clear beer. We'll stop that one there. We'll take another one. The more beer we get through the lines, the clearer it will get. So we're about to prime out number two, which is going to be this guy right here. For priming, we want to go into prime mode. You can see that the button lights up. You can press it down, it doesn't start automatically. Then get your cup over the top because you can get air and a bit of spurting. And you can hit go. It'll continuously pour until you tell it to stop. So that's the excess CO2 in the line coming out. We'll probably get a little bit of water come through. And then you'll get some beer flow through afterwards. So let's go foamy. It's not too bad. Now that we've got a little bit through the line, I'm going to stop that one there. 